thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, I would like to thank Wargaming for bringing me here, uh, because it's great to see all of you people here uh, listening to what I have to say. Uh, the thing is that I'm going to speak about how we built and break genre. Uh, that means I'm going to uh, guide you through several things that we do at Bohemia Interactive uh, to make our games interesting to the players. Uh, like you've heard uh, d during the initial uh, keynote, uh, it's important to aim for the player. Uh, so that's something uh, that uh, uh, is the takeaway from the initial, uh, from the intro. Uh, but I'm going to take you into more details how we do that at Bohemia Interactive, for example. Uh, there is uh, several things uh, that I would like to share with you. Uh, one of them is uh, the introduction uh, about the games that we do, so you know uh, the basics. Uh, then I'm going to discuss uh, the free C that we have uh, at uh, Bohemia, like uh, we are at 4C conference, so it's kind of natural to, to mention that it's free C that we use. And, and then uh, there's going to be discussion. Like if you want, uh, you can possibly ask the questions even mean meanwhile, uh, like rise your hands, something like that. There's uh, plenty of volunteers uh, that, that that's going to provide you with microphones and you can ask. Here it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, let's start uh, with a brief introduction. Uh, the thing is that uh, there is a lot of genres uh, going on. You, you've seen most likely some picture like this uh, of evolving the games uh, from one another. Uh, like at the very beginning, uh, there could have been uh, s some games like Pong perceived as the base for everything. Uh, but if you take a look at current things that are uh, the thing uh, uh, now, it's uh, for, for Knife, uh, Fortnite, and uh, PUBG. Yeah. Uh, both those games uh, can be somehow traced even to the games made, made, made by Bohemia Interactive. Uh, like, uh, for example, PUBG itself. Uh, is based on uh, the uh, Battle Royale, uh, which, is, uh, which Brandon did in H1Z1, and then before uh, he did the mod on uh, Arma 2, Arma 3, and uh, DayZ somehow. Uh, so uh, you may possibly know that DayZ has uh, this Survivor Games thingy, uh, which is exactly uh, the Battle Royale. Yeah. Uh, the same goes for Fortnite, uh, which was the shooter uh, builder uh, where you uh, fight against the zombies. Uh, so uh, this may be possibly seen as based on DayZ because th th that was the thing that started the whole uh, zombie uh, survival genre. Uh, when you take a look, uh, DayZ is based on Arma, uh, Arma 2 to be precise. Uh, I faintly remember uh, the times when uh, Dean Hall uh, was in at in Brno at Bohemia Interactive uh, trying to do the game and I possibly share a story or two uh, with you about that. Yeah. So uh, this is how the games evolve uh, and uh, this is all based on uh, the core values that we have at Bohemia Interactive. Like uh, one of the core values is that we have a tank. Yeah. Uh, this is a cool thing. Uh, like Wargaming has a tank in their office too. Uh, we used to uh, drive with our tank every now and then uh, just to have some fun. And uh, there are different core values that, that we use. Yeah. Uh, like Bohemia was founded uh, several years ago, quite a lot, and it's grown a lot, uh, mainly thanks to Daisy. Uh, we have s seven offices wor worldwide, like uh, two of them in Prague, uh, one in Mnišek, which is pretty close, one in Brno. Then there is Bratislava, Amsterdam, and uh, uh, Thailand. Yeah. And uh, the most core values that we have are Curiosity, creativity, and community. Uh, those three uh, core values can be possibly transferred into creating something, uh, sharing, it with, sharing it with with others, and learning something new out of that. Uh, so uh, those three things uh, are in a circle uh, because as you learn something, you can create something very new. Yeah. Uh, there are many games that support those core values. Uh, the flagship uh, is uh, Arma, or uh, before it was op Operation Flashpoint. Uh, but based on that, uh, there is Daisy, there's Islands, uh, which is the colorful sandbox. Uh, and for example, even Take on Mars could be perceived more as a edutainment uh, than uh, the fun game, uh, but it's actually even funny to play. Uh, 
Uh, one of the things about the curiosity of the players is that they need to perceive uh, the game as something deeper than just fun. Or if they don't need to, uh, there are games that are really great at just having fun. Uh, but if you uh, plan to work with your games on a long tail, like having a game uh, that sells really well five years after the release, like Arma Freak does, uh, then uh, having something deeper helps, helps you to maintain this. Yeah? Uh, to get this, uh, we maintain the attention to details, like you can possibly see in Arma Free uh, or in any other of, of our games, uh, there are bees, which is something that's not usual in other games. Yeah? Uh, but added to that, uh, there are bees, dragons, flies, everything, insects, uh, even rabbits or sm small animals. Uh, it could be just, yeah, we are having them, uh, but we go to such a detail that those uh, objects, uh, like th they are animals, but in game they are objects, uh, they cast shadows. Uh, it takes some rendering time indeed, uh, but it's the immersion for the player uh, that he can see, okay, uh, there's something more to, to the game. It's not just about running, shooting, uh, doing those stuff. Uh, it's really deep, yeah. Um, and it even helps us on the long run in many regards, like with the animals. Uh, there is uh, the feature which we call uh, thermal imaging uh, in Arma 3. So you can uh, put on uh, some thermal imaging uh, goggles and see uh, the heat of uh, various things uh, in, in the area. Yeah. Uh, the thing is that this could be perceived as something tr uh, really overpowered uh, when you know that there's just enemies there. Yeah. So everything that's white, you just sh shoot it. Everything that's black uh, is some background noise. But then suddenly, if you have the animals there, they are white too, because uh, the animals ha have the body temperature higher than the surrounding. Uh, so the players uh, naturally need, need to check if the thing that they are aiming on uh, is uh, the enemy soldier, or if it's, for, for example, an animal. Yeah, so those little details then add together uh, on the big scale. Uh, the same goes uh, with the settings of our games, uh, because uh, we decided for some authentic fiction. Uh, that means uh, that uh, our games are set in the world of ours, uh, like uh, on, on Earth, uh, but with slightly uh, differentiated uh, ge geography of, of, the, uh, of the nations. Yeah. So uh, as you can see here uh, is Cherneros. Uh, Cherneros is uh, the terrain that's used, for example, for Daisy. And, uh, it borders on uh, Russia and it borders on Pakistan, which is used for, if, for example, in Operation Arrowhead. Yeah. Uh, those things are just the fictional armor wares uh, that, that are uh, surrounding our games. On the other hand, uh, we take a great pleasure in taking those things and putting them even deeper into the games. So uh, every map that we do, every terrain, uh, because they are pretty huge, uh, has uh, some GPS coordinates, uh, so people can possibly even track uh, where it is on the real map. So uh, based on the game itself, the people out there created those maps. They weren't created by us. Yeah. Uh, so uh, those pictures that you see uh, are not made by uh, our company, it's made, made by the community, because they uh, learned from the game uh, the GPS coordinates. Uh, the other thing is uh, that uh, based on those GPS coordinates, uh, we are able to, for example, have the correct position of the sun, uh, correct position of the stars. Uh, like those things are possibly neg negligible in uh, other games, uh, but we use it a lot. Like, for example, in uh, the original uh, Cold War Crisis, uh, there was one mission uh, where you need to find the north according to the stars. Yeah. And I can even say that this is something like uh, bohemian DNA, because when you take a look uh, at, for example, Warhorse, they have did a really great game, uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, and they've used the same thing, like uh, their simulation of, of the stars uh, is precise, and they just use uh, tho those things uh, to teach players how to navigate without the compass. Like, there is a compass, but you don't need to use it. You, you can just take a look 
at, at, at the stars and, and use that to your navigation. Uh, this, this is something that is easy to be seen uh, if it's done wrong. Like uh, in the current project that I'm working on, Vigor, uh, we've done uh, the error and the sun is on, on the other uh, side that, than it, it should be. And when I'm playing uh, the maps uh, before it was fixed, uh, I was completely lost because it felt to me that the maps were upside down. Like I just opened the map, checked the terrain, and it was completely different direction because of the direction of the sun is so deeply embedded uh, in uh, players' minds uh, that the player perceives that and orients according to the sun even in the games. Yeah, so those things are details, but they are actually in the end important to make the game whole. Uh, so that's about the curiosity. Yeah. Uh, then we support the creativity uh, because uh, with most of our games, uh, we provide the uh, in-game editor. The in-game editor allows you uh, to do missions on your own. Uh, this started way back uh, in a project called Poseidon that never went out. Uh, and then uh, in the original Cold War Crisis, uh, there's the, the mission editor that we rebuilt into 3D uh, so people can make their own missions, their own scenarios and publish them online. Yeah. Uh, so that allows some long levity of the game because the same way as we do, as we create the campaigns, as we create the stories, as we create the multiplayer modes, uh, people from the community are able to do so. Uh, we share those tools with them and it's pretty easy for them to create uh, the world on their own. Yeah. So the creativity is part of that. We even took it to a new level uh, with, uh, the f with one of the free DLCs for Arma 3 uh, because there is the Zeus game mode. Uh, Zeus game mode is something like a game master. Like uh, you may have seen that in different uh, games already, like mostly in RPGs, uh, like for example, Never Night, Never Winter Nights uh, had those modes uh, where you can create your scenario and then you are the uh, dungeon master and uh, guiding the players through the game. Uh, this is something that we did in Arma 3, which is a military sandbox, uh, and uh, there is a role of Zeus. Uh, this Zeus. Uh, is able uh, to be the game master and prepare some scenarios for the players. Uh, it can be any number of, of the players and the Zeus can play with them or against them, uh, whatever he chooses. So uh, it's really great that uh, someone can prepare the scenario first in the editor and then as a Zeus uh, adjust it according to the capabilities of the players. It can be different persons, th those two. Yeah. And you can see that the players, players are struggling against the scenario, so you, you can help them. You can see it's way too easy, you can send in more opposition. Or in the variant, if you want to just demonstrate your powers, you can use the lightning and uh, strike someone down. Or you can just go inside of one of those AIs that are running there and use him yourself. Like you can guide him uh, and shoot at the players or possibly not shoot at them if you decide or just speak with them. This is something that allows uh, the players to interact with each other in a completely different way. Yeah. Uh, to make it even easier uh, for the players, uh, we used to have uh, some uh, scripting language that, that was just what it is, uh, the scripting language. Uh, we choose to build our own uh, visual scripting language, for example, uh, in islands which is a more cheer cheerful sandbox. Uh, we are going to introduce this visual scripting so uh, everyone uh, is easily able to get in, prepare uh, the scenario that uh, he or she would like to have uh, with other players, or possibly uh, build a completely new game mode, yeah, uh, which is something that I'm going to go into a bit later. Yeah. Uh, the most important thing is actually the players. Like you heard it before, uh, I'm not going to tell you anything uh, new. Uh, the, the thing is that those players form communities along your games. So if you build a good game, uh, then there's going to be a community uh, th that's going to support you. 
uh, in the various ways. Like uh, we always tend to go into early access or some uh, something similar, uh, just because the community is uh, able to uh, put so much feedback for us that it's going to make the game actually much better in the end. Like uh, thanks to the community, we were able to release Arma Free. Uh, Without any major issues d during the release from game uh, for, from early access, yeah, and it was one of the first uh, titles that went into early access on Steam and then was released. Yeah, so the community helps you a lot, and they they, they could possibly uh, guide you. And then uh, on various events, uh, you can share with them uh, the joy of having the games, the joy of preparing something, or. Possibly, uh, if, if the game is successful, uh, you, you can share some merchandise, stuff like that. Uh, this is just my colleagues on Gamescom uh, throwing up uh, some t-shirts, stuff like that, uh, because the community was there and uh, they were looking forward to see uh, what's going to be uh, on Daisy next. Yeah. Uh, I've mentioned uh, Daisy as one of the phenomenons that uh, sprung up uh, from uh, our games uh, because uh, at the very beginning, it was just, hey, uh, there is a guy uh, from New Zealand uh, that's in Brno uh, in our office, and he's making a cool new game mode uh, for Arma 3, uh, which was in development back, back then. And this guy uh, was living in a flat, that's usual, uh, but his neighbor uh, had a dog. And the dog was barking all night. And due to that, uh, he wasn't able to sleep, so he went to work. And during the night hours, uh, he just created Daisy on, on his own. Like, if there wasn't a dog, there wouldn't be a Daisy. <laughs> That's insane. So that guy, Dean Hall, uh, created the phenomena. And then uh, it was re really fun to see how the community grows. Because one day, I, I went to the office. And there was Dean sit sitting behind his computer, as always, because he was sitting there most of the time. And he told me, hey, it's really cool. I've made a new mod, and there is five players playing it. Next week, I came in, and it was, hey, it's really cool. The mod caught up. It's fi 50 people playing it. Cool. Next week, it was 500. And the week after, 5,000. In, it, it increased like that. Like, in a month, it was from zero for to, to 5,000. Then uh, it went viral. and. People were playing Daisy like Matt. Uh, they were bu buying several years old game uh, just to play the mod of it. Yeah. Uh, so this is one of, the, uh, one of the approaches. The other approach you may possibly know. Uh, you know that there's a guy called uh, Player Unknown, Brendan Green. And this guy made the Battle Royale on Arma 3, then uh, uh, made Battle Royale uh, for H1Z1. And then finally, he made his own game. And I'm really happy for him, uh, because he's such a humble guy. And uh, he's still developing the, the game, uh, making it as good as possible. And PUBG is totally worth giving it a try. Yeah, so uh, th that's really great to, to see that people who were making the games based on something you did are actually successful in, in this regard, uh, even more successful than we are, uh, but totally worth it because it's their hard work that they've put into. Yeah. Uh, based on this, uh, we decided to make Vigor. Yeah. Vigor is a game that is based on those uh, three pillars, community, creativity, curiosity. Uh, but it's still a bit different from the other games uh, of Bohemia, because the creativity is no, n not that strong yet. Like uh, We are developing the game. It's going to be free to play. Uh, currently, it's playable on uh, Xbox in the game preview, uh, so you can possibly give it a try. Uh, and we decided, hey, cool. Uh, there's plenty of uh, battle royales or uh, s s stuff like that. So let's make something on our own, not the battle royale, uh, something completely different. like. What if uh, there, there, was, there were those matches, like in Battle Royale, uh, and they were somehow connected together? Like, imagine the time of the first Dota as a mod for uh, Warcraft 3. Uh, like, uh, 
the first Dota was just about one off matches. Th that's it. Like you started uh, the match, had a lot of fun, and then finished the match and started the new one without anything from the previous. Uh, we decided to, to go more uh, in a way like, for example, League of Legends does, uh, that there is some continuity between the matches. Uh, like there is something that ties those uh, matches together. So in Vigor, we decided uh, for the player to have a shelter uh, that uh, he or she improves. And uh, by improving that, uh, they need to go to the encounters, and in those encounters, get gather resources. Oh, wait. Uh, PUBG is based on killing, isn't it? So uh, we decided that uh, killing is a cool thing in the shooter. Like It makes sense that uh, if you have a lot of guns that you would like to shoot them. Uh, but uh, we be based the figure on the premise that it's not necessary. It's just w one of the tools that you may or may not use. Uh, so uh, this is a slight change uh, that's uh, possibly going to uh, be a different genre, possibly not. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and uh, in Vigor, you are able to go into the encounter and then leave at any time. Like there are designated exits in the levels, and when you go to the exit, you just leave. There's no need to be the last man standing. There's no need to uh, fight for everything, fight for glory, glory if you don't feel like that. You choose your risks, you choose your re rewards based on that. So if you feel I'm going in and I'm going to win this time uh, where there, there is no crucial win. Like there's airdrop that you can, you can take, yeah. But uh, if you feel like it and you want the confrontation, you want to shoot your weapons, please come in blazing and go for the airdrop. If you want to just collect the stuff and improve your shelter, please come in, uh, grab the stuff and return back uh, to your shelter to improve it and have some meaningful improvements all the time. Yeah. So uh, this is how we uh, create uh, our games. Like we go uh, through the curiosity, so with the attention to, to the det details, uh, through our community uh, to make interesting choices. And uh, with the creativity, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, so, do you happen to have any questions uh, to the topic? Uh, if you don't, I have some suggestions for you, so you can possibly pick one or, or two, or just ask me anyway. Uh, there is a cool guy with a microphone, or actually two of them, including the moderator. Thanks, thank you very much. Uh, so, should you have any questions, feel free to ask me anytime. Last, last. Okay. Do you hear me? <laughs> uh, how do you how do you usually decide what a player needs and what it doesn't need for your game? Yeah. Uh, to support your creativity and community and curiosity. Uh, that's a really good point. Like uh, we need to think about the players first. Uh, so uh, there's a always a tough decision uh, what players uh, need and what they don't need. Uh, in our games, uh, we try to make uh, the UI of the game uh, as non-existent as possible. Uh, like, uh, usually, uh, when you go uh, to the games nowadays, uh, there's a lot of guiding signs, stuff like that, uh, that's going to guide the players to the next waypoint, uh, to another waypoint, to the optional objective, everything. Uh, that's something that uh, we decided that uh, players actually don't need uh, because they are more immersed uh, if they need to find things on their own. Uh, so every time uh, th that we face this difficult decision if player needs something or not, uh, we think about, hey, uh, let's make the game authentic. Uh, like This is the premise that we built the game on. Uh, and uh, if the player doesn't uh, need any helpers in the real life, yeah, uh, then why would they need the helpers in the game? Uh, the players that, that, that we play with, the, the players that play our games, uh, 
they are really intelligent, like uh, all of them. N not only those who play our games, but generally speaking, players are really intelligent uh, people. So uh, d don't make uh, the games that make them dumber. Uh, don't make it easier for them just for sake of having it easier on your side. Like uh, always think about uh, the investment on making the more difficult uh, implementation uh, just to reward the players uh, with something that they need to do on their own. Uh, give them the agency uh, to make their own decisions. Yeah. Uh, make or possible in Vigor, we decided to uh, make the skill matter a, a bit more. Uh, so uh, you can see there is a container uh, that you can possibly loot. Yeah. And to show the skill of the player, uh, the players who are already skilled and know how to play are able to distinguish uh, those containers on, at, at the first sight on long range. Like uh, there are, for example, cars, and if the car's been already looted, uh, then it has the doors opened, uh, the trunk is open, stuff like that. So you can clearly distinguish uh, from the very beginning uh, if it's looted or not. If you are a new player, uh, you don't know that, so you need to spend your time going to the car, checking, and then approach the interaction marker that's going to tell you, yeah, there is something that you can interact with. Yeah, so there's a, some help, some uh, guiding hand of, for the be beginning players, but still uh, the skill of the more advanced players is shown during the game, uh, so th they can see uh, that something is uh, worth their, their time. Yeah. So uh, this is how we make the decision. Uh, like. We value the skill of, of the players, so we decide uh, to make it like that in the game. Uh, did that answer the question? Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yep. Wait, uh, I see. <laughs> uh, make armor not war. Yeah. Uh, you grow your community uh, with your strong game, like. Uh, hmm. Arma, like military shooter, when you need to first you shoot and kill another uh, uh, another unit, uh, and you say you create vigor uh, where you uh, don't no, don't need necessary to kill or shoot. Yeah. Uh, how you think uh, your community uh, when you grows with you? Uh, it's uh, more polite with you to create new game without shooting or something like this. Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Like uh, the community, uh, like the hardcore community of Arma, the hardcore community of Daisy, uh, was actually angry uh, because uh, there are se several reasons. One of them is that uh, Vigor is Xbox ex exclusive, so uh, they are not going to play it m most likely as they are most uh, mostly on the PCs. Uh, but uh, it's something completely different. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, we already done a game like that, uh, Islands. Uh, so. Uh, it's the more cheerful game, and uh, it's for a different audience. So people eventually realize that, yeah, not all games that we make uh, are uh, aimed to the same community. Uh, some, some people just enjoy the games as they have it. Like, for example, with Arma, uh, it's a military sandbox, but you can do anything there. Like, you can build your own scenarios that are completely different. And we, we decided uh, to, to do something completely different with the Laws of War DLC, uh, where we show uh, that the humanitarian law uh, is something to uh, take into account. Uh, it's not like, OK, we are doing a military game, so uh, there is someone barricaded in the house, so let's destroy it completely by bombardment. That's not how uh, it works in the reality. Let, there is some uh, Geneva Conventions uh, in place, the humanitarian laws, and we uh, wanted to show that in the Laws of War DLC. And actually, the Make Armor Not War uh, is one of our competitions that we did. Uh, it, it is a competition that we did at the very beginning after release of Armor Free, uh, like one year in. And it was the competition uh, for the modders, for the people from the community uh, to do their mods. And for that, uh, we had uh, 500,000 euros uh, for the winning team. and. Uh, the, the winning team uh, actually made uh, the RHS mod, uh, which is uh, the simulation of uh, Russian and US uh, vehicles and equipment. 
Yeah, so this is something that uh, wasn't uh, portrayed in our game because Arma 3 is uh, si situated in, uh, in 2035, uh, while uh, this Cold War era equipment is not there anymore and it used to be in Arma 2. So the community felt, yeah, we need to have this Cold War era stuff in. Uh, so they went in the to the competition and won it by this thing. Yeah, so uh, there are d different aspects and people, thanks to the tools that we provide, uh, are able to make our games into something completely different. And that's the cool thing, because yeah, on one hand, uh, you can s see it as, okay, uh, there are people out there who are finishing the games instead of us. Uh, on the other hand, uh, by having such a strong community, uh, we know what the community wants uh, and we can make the games much better uh, thanks to that. Like Now we know that uh, s setting the game in Cold War era is much more interesting uh, for, for the players, uh, at least for our community, so we decided to base Vigor in the Cold War era. Yeah. Uh, so this is all interconnected. Uh, did that answer the question at least a bit? Thank you. Yes, please. Uh, you say that early access helps you to improve your game, but isn't that the purpose of beta testing? I mean, what's the difference between early access and beta test? Uh, yeah, uh, like uh, from our point of, point of view, there's not much of a difference. Like. Uh, we try to go into early access as soon as possible, as soon as there is a game. So usually it's not even uh, considered to be beta because the beta testing, it's usually something that you have the features locked that you need uh, to, to know what the game is all about. Uh, like for example, with uh, Arma 3, uh, we decided based on the feedback that we've got during the early access uh, that we are not going to release uh, the campaign at the very beginning. Uh, we are going to postpone it, but rather, uh, we would add more uh, armored vehicles, stuff like that, based on the feedback from the community. So uh, we changed even the f features that are going to be in the initial release based on that. So uh, that's something that I uh, perceive that's not possible during the beta testing. Uh, and the early access, if, if done right, uh, provides you with a lot of insights. And it's not just about testing the game, but it's about testing what the players actually want in the game. Uh, so if you do, do it right, uh, it can make your game much better. Did that answer your question? Thank you. Uh, there's, yeah. How do you guys study your community's desires? Uh, is there a dedicated department with that uh, analyzes Twitter comments and reads them on Facebook and social networks and Steam and stuff? How do you uh, put it all together and then make decisions based on that? Uh, this is a really good question because this is something that we are changing currently. Uh, previously, it was more of a gut feeling. Like, uh, if you see that all the uh, scenarios that people uh, do are situated underwater, then it kind of makes sense that uh, you, uh, you lack underwater uh, content, and it is something that you, you would need to improve. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we go through all the social networks uh, generally and listen to the community. Still, keep in mind that uh, on the social networks. Uh, it's usually uh, the vocal minority of people. Yeah? So uh, it's something uh, really hard to measure. Uh, still, uh, we have analytics in our game that provide us with insight of what's played, uh, what people actually use and what they don't use. And based on that, uh, we can uh, uh, make some decisions based on hard data. And now uh, we are uh, going to have more community managers uh, that, that are going to discuss the stuff uh, with, with the players. Like there is already some pre-selection of people uh, by those who are uh, attending our forums, uh, attending Twitter, stuff like that. Uh, but it's the best way that we are able to manage. Then uh, another way uh, would be to, for example, invite them uh, into our offices. Uh, which is something that uh, we usually do uh, with the community creators. Uh, like there's going to be a, a gathering of community creators in a fortnight uh, in Nishek here, uh, and those community creators are going to uh, share their creations with us. We are going to uh, show them what we are developing, and we are going to discuss what would help them or uh, how can possibly they help making Arma better. And 
uh, as a reward, they are going to drive the tank. <laughs> Uh, or not the drive, but the ride the tank, to be precise. Like there's going to be the designated driver, uh, not that we let anyone just drive the tank around. <laughs> uh, did that answer the question? Thank you. Yep. Ah, yeah. Uh, I see the Bohemia incubator there on the screen. Can yep. you tell us more about it? Yep. What it is? Uh, the Bohemian Incubator is something of an early access, but outside of Steam. Uh, like uh, at the very beginning, uh, there were two games in uh, Bohemian Incubator, uh, actually three of them, yeah. Uh, the Take on Mars uh, was in Bohemian Incubator, uh, available on our store, but not available directly on, on Steam to, to be purchased. Uh, Islands, uh, which is still part of the Bohemian Incubator, even though it's now in early access on Steam, and uh, Project Argo. Uh, which uh, went out as a free-to-play game uh, on Steam uh, eventually. Uh, so this is how we approach the early access. Uh, this is how we ap approach the way that people can provide us with the feedback in the really early uh, phases. Like the thing is that in Bohemia Incubator, uh, the players are not guaranteed that the game's actually going to uh, come out. Like uh, it, it may be that the ideas are completely wrong, and we are going to scrap the game altogether. Uh, it didn't happen uh, in, in incubator yet, uh, but it may happen eventually. Uh, so people are well, well notified that uh, there is going to be the possibility that the game is going to change drastically. Uh, this is kind of our reaction uh, even to, to Daisy. Uh, because uh, Daisy is being developed for a long time based on the community needs, and we decided to uh, build both the technology and the game at, at, at one time, which is a thing that is quite difficult. Uh, so we want this to be more structured and more transparent to the players, uh, so they know what are they actually going to go into. Like, uh, if you possibly take take a look on Daisy's store page at, at, at Steam, there's a huge disclaimer: don't buy this game. It's not enough. <laughs> like uh, you need to be even more transparent to the players uh, and let them know uh, that uh, the game is in development and it may change drastically and it, it may possibly take some time. So that's why we uh, started with, with started with Bohemia Incubator. Did that answer the question? Cool. Thanks a lot. Uh, we are slowly ra running out of time. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'll just uh, summarize some takeaway. Like, uh, details uh, keep the game interesting. Th that's something that uh, you possibly know. It's something uh, easy to distinguish. But it's, there are some things really cheap to do, like, for example, adding those insects that uh, a script can do in a day. Uh, and it's going to uh, improve the immersion of the player into the game. So uh, think about even those small details once you have something at least a bit solid adding them would help the immersion a lot. Uh, then the tools, uh, they are crucial uh, for you uh, to create the game indeed. And uh, then possibly even f for the players, uh, because I can imagine that even free to play games like uh, match free games are able uh, to use the community uh, more. Uh, f uh, with if they share, for example, the tools, uh, the community can create more levels and share, share that with the other members. So yeah, and that leads me to the last point, the, that the community matters. Yeah. Thank you very much. If you want to have any uh, other questions, feel free to uh, catch me at any time uh, here. I'm going to be here today, tomorrow, uh, or possibly uh, you, you can write me on email, uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, anything. Uh, feel free to connect with, with me, and I'm going to try uh, to answer your questions as much as possible. Thank you very much.